Good morning. Um, I just posted my last video yesterday and I didn't say what date it was and I think that people that saw it thought that it was late yesterday, <laughs> but it wasn't. It took me over a month to post that video. Um, I've been having, you know, a lot of issues, a lot of technical issues, depression I've been fighting. Um, and, um, but I wanted everyone to know that things are bad sometimes and things are better than they were in some ways. And, um, it's been, it's been a time. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But, um, I've done a lot of work inside the camper myself personally um, as far as curtains everything is not perfect I did not paint the walls as I had intended because it was raining for weeks weeks and weeks it was raining and you know so everything was kind of damp and you can't paint like that and I got tired of looking at the ugly <laughs> everywhere so I went ahead and I started hanging up my curtains and putting out my pretties and I decided I don't know when I'll paint I've got the paint it will be yellow <laughs> maybe with some orange like like creamsicle orange not like not like that not that bright orange but I decided for I don't really have a color scheme what I wanted was just everything that I like. So as I, as I was picking out stuff I wanted, of course, purple is my signature color, but in reality, maybe it's not my favorite. I mean, it is my favorite, but as I look around and I'm picking things out, hardly any of it is purple almost none of it's purple and part of that is because purple is not a real popular color so I don't know why so it's hard to find things that have purple with other colors you can and I didn't want to have a monochrome you know purple everywhere I didn't want to live in a grape <laughs> so I added purple curtains and nothing else is purple and I don't care if you don't like my purple curtains in, <laughs> but I'm gonna uh, have my purple curtains. So I wanted to show you around the place. And so as you can see here, I have these sheer curtains. I bought those at Ollie's, which is like a, it's kind of like a railroad salvage. It's just opened up here in town. It's kind of new. I bought um, two pairs of these. Five bucks a pair. That was nice. And um, these are actually 56 inches, so they're shorter than they don't reach the floor. And I don't know if you could see that or not. Let's try that again. They don't reach the floor. Can you see that? And um, that's fine. And I have hung this. This actually has purple in it, too. I, this is just a shower curtain that I had left over and I doubled it and I hung it over a bar like a like a shower curtain bar that I secured here to cover up the hole between the camper and the truck see there's the truck there can you see that yeah and um, it covers the hole and it's not like particularly warm. It's not what I was using when it was cold. I was using a wool blanket when it was cold. And the curtains that I have hanging here are shears, so they're not like, you know, really gonna keep heat in or anything. And I did that on purpose because it's spring and it's almost, you know, it's about to be summer and it's gonna be hot. So by fall, I may change the curtains and the the drape there to something thicker but right now I like it and this is oh gosh I keep dropping this phone this is the same quilt 
that I had in the house. I really like it a lot. It's purple. No, it doesn't have purple. <laughs> it has orange and teal and some hot pink and I really like it. And um, then here's the day bed. I don't know if I showed this to you. I don't think I did. I took put some pictures of it on Instagram, but this is the replacement to my couch. Um, my couch from the water damage was pretty ruined. The jackknife couch or whatever you call it that was in here. And so we took that out and threw it away. And then Fred built this wooden platform. I'm trying to show you. It's very difficult to get the camera to point where you want it to point sometimes. It's just wood. See here. And then let me flip this around. You can actually reach under here and you can lift it up and you can see that's where my batteries are and stuff like that. And then this is two layers of foam and a twin size fitted sheet. And then all my blankies, I mean pillows. <laughs> and uh, you can see I still have the, the film on the windows to keep out the prying eyes. And then I bought these awesome aqua, aqua curtains. And um, ever since I bought the camper, I have been trying to come up with what am I going to call my camper and a lot of people think it's already got a name because the previous owners had put on their on a sticker on the back that says Tonka toy and they think that's cute and everything but it's not me and so I'm going to be eventually taking that off or painting over it or something but I found this I was going to make something, but then I found this for like three or four dollars at Walmart. It's like a fake canvas thing. It's crooked right now. And um, this is what I decided on. Oh, anyway, so my camper is named Sunshine. So this is the dinette. Still not a workstation. Working on it. <laughs> but it looks better than it has in few weeks um I bought these cushions at Ollie's here and they were pretty cheap and then I cut this one to fit on top they're both the same and uh, I bought these this set of twin size or excuse me king size um, pillowcases and I thought that I would put these cushions into the pillowcases and then I wouldn't have to make covers. And uh, it's not really working. Let's see, this one is way too big. Looks kind of stupid. And this one is not, it's too narrow to fit this cushion. So that didn't work. I'm going to have to figure out some other way to cover these. This is something interesting. I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of dark over here. But I bought that stereo at a pawn shop for 30 bucks. And it was so funny because when I bought it, I thought, oh, it's so tiny and perfect for my camper. And then I got it in here and I was like, holy crap, that's kind of big. <laughs> but then Fred used some scrap wood and he built this. Of course, eventually it's going to get painted. But right now you can see that it's scrap wood and it looks ugly. So he built this. He had to replace this wall back here because that is the vented area for the propane. Because that's my fridge right there. And, um, but he built this platform. We put this up here. I'm going to put some kind of, like we have these rubber things here. And that, that might work just fine if I find some more of those. Where uh, that holds stuff from falling in. Because they're tight right here inside this square portion that he made but they can slide this way. And then this is where my, um, I did have my, um, my uh, convection oven here, but I decided that A, I probably didn't need it. And two, 
it takes way too much electricity. So I've got some little canisters here with my coffee and my flax seed and my chia seeds over here. Here's some screws. And um, my magic bullet sitting over here and my essential oils. Can you see my essential oils? And um, this thing, I'm trying to get this off the wall because it's it's not plugged in anyway. And I can't figure I took out all the screws I could see and I still can't get it off the wall, but I want to move it. Because right now, for my kitchen stuff, I have this thing sitting here. And that's not safe because this says in, it said in the directions not to use it with the cord wrapped around in here because it's going to generate heat, I guess, and it's just not safe. But that's how I'm using it because the cord's 25 feet long and I don't need 25 feet to go from here to here. So I would like to move this thing or another one over here instead. So eventually, eventually. One thing that I really, really, really hate. Uh, can you see these ugly cabinet doors? They're so flimsy and ugly. And once you close them, you can't open them. And once you open them, you can't close them. And, uh, they're just, they're not good. I don't like them. And then on top of that, for some reason, I don't know where it went, but one of these is missing. So there's only one on this side. Can you see that? Yeah, so there's only one on this side. <coughs> so there's the lovely toilet. And my jewelry. I don't know if you can see. It's really bright with the sun coming in, but there's my jewelry hanger. Here's the part of the closet you've already seen from where we took out the shower. And dun da da da! Here is the new side. You can see that Fred built a wall here to frame that back in. And he put the bottom part in. Can you see that? With the carpet, he found that part where nobody had thrown it away. It was just out there in the shed. He found that and he put that back in. And then he added a shelf with a lip like I asked for, which is awesome. And he, uh, he, said, uh, he asked me if I wanted more shelves. And I said, no, you know what? I have more clothes than I thought. So I've got these clothes over here. And then I've got this area where I keep some longer stuff. And then I have this thing hanging here. And this is good because I can throw in some dirty clothes. I can have towels in the bottom. And then this is interesting. This is my little drawer thingy. And I had this thing hanging around. I don't even know from how long. And it's one of those things that you're not using it, but you don't throw it away because you keep thinking... I don't know, maybe I'll need it for something. And look at what I did with it. I took this giant um, bungee cord here and I hooked it on the bottom drawer and then hooked it up here on this so it keeps it from um, keeps it from tipping over when you're driving. And then I have put um, some sticky thingies in here to hold these two together so so that works out pretty good so I wanted to tell you that you know stuff is better some stuff is better and uh, here's the kitchen area I've got all my nice little curtains up and stuff um, this is pretty ingenious this was where there were two, I kind of, this is where there was two drawers. And on the bottom was, gosh, I can't get this to stay still. Okay, so there was two drawers there. And the bottom underneath the drawers was a little furnace that didn't work. And I said, well, if it doesn't work, let's take it out because that'll give me more space, more storage space. So my friend, the one that ripped out the thing and crashed the camper and made all the mess, 
he came in here and was trying to find out how to take the furnace out and when he couldn't figure it out he ripped the drawers out and the drawer uh, the parts that hold the drawers in and everything and just broke the whole damn thing <sighs> there's there just doesn't seem to be any end to the stuff this guy screwed up we have parted ways anyway so Fred came in here there was um, I had something sitting here and I realized that my water jugs fit there nicely so he built me a shelf in the middle it's just perfect size for two of these two and a half gallon water jugs which is perfect for me you might want a five gallon jug and that's awesome but I'm not supposed to carry eight pounds more than eight pounds with my bad neck so two and a half pounds is actually what is that 16 17 20 pounds for two and a half pounds something like that so it's still it's over my what I'm supposed to carry but I can carry it you know occasionally so two two and a half jug two and a half gallon jugs is just perfect for me and then underneath I've got some storage space it's kind of icky in there and I don't like storage space on the floor because I don't bend over well ever since I had my neck surgery my head is too heavy <laughs> um, for the hardware and whatnot going on in my in my neck so I don't like bending over and I'm bending over right now and I don't like it <clears throat> starts to mess with my vision and then underneath the refrigerator is another little cubby hole and this is where we get to the bad news you see I have some stuff stuffed in that hole a tent oh, it's too bright isn't it let me turn it off a tent and um, stuff well originally that hole um, had a dog bed and it was gonna be Coco's little hidey hole and I fed her in there and had her dog bed in there well and I told you that Coco had fallen into the dashboard and she had a wound like a blood blister and she um, it wasn't getting better I was watching it and at first I can't seem to get comfortable so at first it seemed like it was just not gonna get better but it wasn't getting worse either when all of a sudden it got infected so I put her on um, an antibiotic and because uh, her face had swollen up and the antibiotic was working well and the um, swelling in her face went down but she still had the ball and then it kind of started slowly getting a little better and she did vomit once or twice but I didn't think that there was anything unusual with that because you know I mean she was taking an antibiotic and she's always the whole time I've had her she's had a sensitive tummy and tended to uh, get sick easily and vomit And then spring break was starting and the VOV was starting and um, the first day of the VOV was Friday and when I came home Friday she was uh, really bad she wasn't moving she was staggering around when I tried to get her to go potty she was able to go outside and go potty because I picked her up and put her out there but she was staggering around and uh, I called around and I uh, some rescue people that I knew and I asked them for advice about you know what vet to take her to and the emergency vet was in West Little Rock which is like 50 miles from here and I thought I thought well she's a little weak and disoriented but I think she can wait till the morning so the vet was going to open at seven in the morning or eight in the morning 
Saturday morning. And um, I was up all night with her. I was really worried about her. She would uh, she would act fine for a minute, and then she would like lay down in exhaustion and like not be able to move and have her legs sticking out all like she was stressed, you know. And um, I was up all night with her, and so at um, eight in the morning, I took her to the vet, and they were gonna work her in. And something went crazy. We went to Dr. Fletcher here in Hot Springs, kind of outside Hot Springs. And um, I don't know what happened. They said that uh, they were going to put her on an IV because she was dehydrated. And um, then they took her out of the room and they shaved her leg to start the IV. And then they came back in and they said they wanted permission to put her down. And I said, well, before we do that, I'd like to hydrate her. And they started getting really ugly with me. And I couldn't figure out why or what was going on. And they, and they, they were saying that they wanted permission to put her down because if I left, then they wouldn't be able to get a hold of me and she would be suffering. And I said, well, you know, I'm not going anywhere right now. And, you know, I have a cell phone. And if you need more phone numbers, I'll give you my daughter's phone number. And, um, you know, you're not going to not be able to get a hold of me. And um, she just kept going on and on and, and like yelling at me about it and demanding that I give them permission to put her down. And, um, I said, well, before I give permission to put her down, I want to see if we can save her. That's why I'm here. Um, and then, so she sent in another, her nurse, who came in yelling at me and asking me if I was diagnosed with anything and was I crazy and saying that I was going to abandon her there and that I didn't have any money and they were extending me credit. And I was like, you're not extending me credit. I'm paying for this. And they were like, well, you don't have any money. And I was like, I've got some money. And how much money do you want? I'll put down a deposit or whatever you need. And, you know, whatever else, I'll start a GoFundMe maybe. Or, you know, I have people that I can, that can help. I can take a loan, whatever. And, um... They were just really, really ugly. And then I was crying because of the way they were yelling at me and treating me. And I was, they came, they said that if I didn't stop crying and acting like a crazy person and disrupting their practice, they were going to throw me out. And I started to panic and I said, you can't throw me out. Coco needs to be treated. And um, they said, well, we've had to stop treating her to come in here and deal with you. And I was like, well, I don't know why you're dealing with me. Get in there and help Coco. And um, anyway, I finally, I was in desperation. I said, well, fine, you have my permission to put her down. Can you please treat her? And they said, you're leaving. And I was like, what do you, what? And they just threw me and Coco out, refused to treat her. They never started the IV. So I left there, I left there in tears with her and um, I was looking for this vet that I knew in town was holistically minded, but when I got to where her office was, she had moved. I, I didn't know where she was at. So um, I kept going down the road to another vet that I had seen before that I was a little bit familiar with. Um, Hot Springs Animal Hospital and um, I can't remember the doctor's name right now but she was much nicer <sighs> much nicer and um, she uh, Coco was vomiting blood she had started vomiting blood at the other place well apparently she'd been vomiting blood here in the camper but I didn't know it was blood because by the time I saw it, it was just brown stuff on the, you know, on the floor or on the furniture. Um, 
But the, the, this vet, she explained to me that the blood was because she had kidney disease and she had had kidney disease for years and we didn't know. And because of that, she had developed ulcers and the ulcers were bleeding. And um, probably from the antibiotics. And um, they were talking to me about putting her down. And I said, well, can we not put her on an IV and hydrate her? And I don't understand how something as inexpensive and simple as a bag of saline solution prompts veterinarians to say, oh, that will cost you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And she was saying that if she put Coco on an IV bag, that she would be in the hospital all weekend and it would cost a minimum of $800. And, um, at the time I was on the phone periodically with a friend of mine in Jacksonville who's done rescue and has a lot of very sick little dogs, uh, suffering from kidney disease and diabetes and all kinds of little problems or big problems in little dogs, chihuahuas mostly. And she said, I have IV bags and I have catheters and I have, um, you know, all kinds of things, and we can hydrate her at home. So, that the veterinarian recommended that I that I either put her down or hydrate her. So I opted for hydration. And um, my friend was coming from Jacksonville. She jumped, she threw everything in her car, and she jumped in the car and rushed here to Hot Springs. So I left the um, veterinarian with Coco and brought her back here and I set her I laid her down in her bed she tried to she did manage to go pee but when she tried to squat down to poop she fell over and she just laid there and um, the poor thing had been trying to poop all morning and the first vet <laughs> said that that was uh, the fact that while she was laying there that she lost a little bit of poop on the table that that meant that she had been that way for a long time and that I had just been that I was lying and that she had been losing her bowels for a long time and I was like no this has never happened before and she was fine two days ago and she <laughs> anyway she just had to poop and she was too weak and dizzy to squat and poop and so it was coming out it will come out eventually you know Anyway, um, I forgot why I was saying that. Anyways, I had her here on her bed and I put a towel on her and um, I started mixing up some essential oils. Now that I knew she had kidney disease, I knew what to look for, for remedies. And uh, I started mixing up some stuff and I dosed her with some stuff and I put some citrus oils in some water and I started giving her some water while I was waiting for um for my friend to come with the IV bag and she got lost on the way and I was on the phone with her and I was sitting with Coco had just given her some water and Coco was totally alert completely alert she was too weak to stand she was so dehydrated but she was alert she was watching me she was worried when I left her to go inside the camper and mix up oils but she was glad to see me and thumping her tail when I came back and then I was on the phone with her uh trying to direct her to come to the right way and suddenly Coco had something like something like a seizure but or a stroke and she was gone just like that and I held her in my arms as she died And, um, she's gone. And I miss her. It's been, um, eight days since she passed, because that was Saturday and today is Sunday. 
she died on St. Patrick's Day. And, um, it was a beautiful sunny day. And, um, one of the things is she was so cold at the vet and all night I had kept her in the bed with me under the covers trying to keep her warm. And she was so cold and they said that was one of the symptoms was that she had low temperature. And so that's why when I brought her back here, I put her outside in the sunshine to dry and warm her up. And so when she died, she was warm. She was finally warm. I hope she felt a little bit better before that happened. But I believe that if that first vet had hydrated her, she may have had a chance because we could have um, flushed her kidneys and now knowing that she had kidney disease I could have treated her but um, the veterinarians were so concerned with how much money they could get out of her or worried about doing work without being compensated that they let her die um, and I wanted to tell you that, um, some of the main causes of kidney disease in these little dogs is, um, vaccinations because they are over vaccinating dogs, especially small dogs. And something you might not know is that a Great Dane and a Chihuahua receive the same dose vaccine. And, um, I mean, you wouldn't give Tylenol to your kid in the same dosage that you would to you, right? Um, and then they're giving... Uh, rabies vaccinations, which most veterinarians believe are only need one. Veterinarians who research, put it that way, know that uh, one vaccine will give them immunity. <laughs> will run titers to make sure that they're immune rather than continually over vaccinating them. But the law says you have to give them a, a rabies vaccination every year. And when you're giving this giant, huge dose to tiny little dogs, it's no wonder that it destroys their kidneys and their livers and causes autoimmune diseases and basically the same problems it's causing in children today. And in addition to rabies vaccinations, they keep inventing new vaccines that they can sell you. <laughs> I was listening to them selling vaccines to people for their poor little dogs while they were, while Coco was dying. And I wanted to warn you not to let them over vaccinate your dog. And <clears throat> the other uh, thing that causes kidney disease in little dogs is GMOs, genetically modified organisms, which 98% of all corn, soy, and canola that you're going to get a hold of in the United States is GMO. And the number one ingredient in most dog foods that are not grain-free is corn, which is a registered pesti pesticide. Corn is now a registered pesticide because of what they've done to it. And the way that it works is it destroys the or organs of the animals, people, and animals that eat it. Um, the whole time that I had Coco, I kept her on a grain-free diet. And um, she had difficulty with any time she would get a hold of something. If somebody gave her a snack or she got into something, she would be sick. That was one of the symptoms of kidney disease I didn't know. I thought it was just her stomach. I thought it was, I knew that she had been eating GMO food her entire life, most likely, and that she had gut problems. And I thought that's why. And I thought I was trying to heal the gut problems. I didn't know she had kidney disease. 
And then, um, I just wanted to tell you, feed your animals grain-free, GMO-free food. Don't vaccinate them. It's killing them. And that's enough for this video. It's gone on long enough. I'm Victoria. Peace.